Hi everyone and welcome to our video on some exam questions related to energy. Our first exam question states, figure 11 shows a toy car in different positions on a racing track. The toy and racing track can be modelled as a closed system. Why can the toy car and the racing track be considered a closed system? Tick one box. So if we have a look here, we have a racing track. The car is racing down, going into a loop and then coming out. And all this is a closed system. So is it the racing track and the car have gravitational potential energy? The racing track and the car all are always in contact with each other or the total energy of the racing track and car is constant. If the racing car is coming down from up there, it has gravitational potential energy because it's not on the ground. It's coming down, but then it has a much lower gravitational potential energy because it's on the ground. It doesn't have any because it's on the ground. And then it gains that gravitational potential energy when it's in the um, on the loop at the top and then it comes back down to zero. So it can't be the first one because at some point the racing car does, doesn't have any gravitational potential energy and at some points the racetrack doesn't have gravitational potential energy as well because it's on the floor. The racing track and the car are always in contact with each other. This is not necessarily because if the car is going at a fast speed, sometimes it can lose contact with the loop. And if they're in contact with each other, it doesn't mean that it's a closed system. The answer is the total energy of the racing track and the car is constant. And the reason for that is because at a constant energy supply, the energy is conserved. So that means it's a closed system because energy can't escape or enter. And that would get you one more. Okay, next question. It says the car is released from rest at position A and accelerates due to gravity down the track to position B. Mass of the toy car is 0 0.04, so we have the mass there. The height we're given is 90 centimeters, and the gravitational field strength we're given 9.8 newtons per kg. We need to calculate the maximum possible speed of the car when it reaches position B. Now, position B is at this point over here, so when it's on the floor. Now, just by looking at that, you can see an equation, which is the gravitational potential energy equation. And then we can link that to the kinetic energy equation. So we have our gravitational potential energy is the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength multiplied by the height. The mass is 0.04 multiplied by the gravitational field strength, which is 9.8, multiplied by the height, which is in centimeters, we need to convert it into meters, so we would divide it by 100, so that's 0 0.9 meters. Now, that would get us the gravitational potential energy. So 0 0.04 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 0 0.9. That's gonna give us 0 0.3528 okay now this is in joules so that's the energy now it says work out the maximum possible speed of the car so now we need to use the kinetic energy equation half times the mass times the velocity squared this is what we need to work out the velocity we know that the kinetic energy is in joules as well so it's going to be 0 0.3528 okay and it's half multiplied by the mass which we know is 0 0.04 multiplied by the velocity which we need to work out so half of 0 0.04 is 0 0.02 and that's equal to 0 0.3528. Okay, 
we can divide to get it onto the other side and that's going to be equal to v squared okay so 0 0.3528 divided by 0 0.02 is going to give you an answer of 17.64 so v squared is 17.64 now to find v we will need to square root our answer and therefore v is going to be 4.2 meters per second so the maximum possible speed of the car is going to be 4.2 meters per second and that would be worth five marks okay next question figure 11 is repeated below at position c the car's gravitational potential energy is 0 0.2 joules greater than position b so at position c which is over here the energy is greater than position b which is here by 0 0.2 joules how much kinetic energy does the car need at position b to complete the loop of the track so how much energy will be needed at this point to ensure the car goes around the loop and comes back out so it has to be more than 0 0.2 joules because while it's going across the loop that means some energy could be lost to the surroundings okay the car is going to be moving at the top so it needs to complete the turn so it has to be more than 0 0.2 joules because the car has to be so the car has to move at the top of the loop and some energy may be dissipated to the surroundings okay and that would be worth two marks there okay Figure 4 shows a sailing boat crossing an ocean. There is a wind turbine on the boat. The wind turbine generates electricity to charge a battery on the boat. Name one other renewable energy resource that could be used on the boat to generate electricity. So it just says another energy resource. What could it be? It could be solar. So solar energy could be used. And that would be worth one mark. The boat also has a generator that burns a fossil fuel. The battery can be charged by either the wind turbine or the generator. Give two reasons why this is useful. So why is this useful? Having a wind turbine and a generator, where, uh, and a generator which burns a fossil fuel. When there is no wind, we can use the generator. So when there is no wind, You can use the generator and when when there is wind there will be less burning of fossil fuels okay so when we are using wind less fossil fuels are burned and this reduces the amount of gases which are released into the atmosphere and so it is useful okay that would be worth two marks okay explain one environmental impact of using fossil fuels to generate electricity when burning fossil fuels what happens is that carbon dioxide an example so carbon dioxide is released into the 
atmosphere and this can contribute to global warming okay and that would be what two marks naming the gas and the effect it has okay the kinetic energy of the boat is 81 kilojoules the mass of the boat is 8000 kilograms calculate the speed of the boat so we just have to use the kinetic energy equation which is half times m times v squared 81 kilojoules if we multiply that by a thousand is 81 thousand joules and that's equal to a half multiplied by the mass which is 8000 multiplied by the velocity squared we need to calculate the velocity half of 8000 is 4000 and that's equal to 81000 joules you can divide by 4000 on both sides to get the velocity squared so the velocity squared is going to be 81000 so 81000 divided by 4000 and that's going to give you 20.25 to work out v you can square root your answer and that's going to give you 4.5 so the speed is going to be 4.5 meters per second and that would be worth four marks now okay final question as the boat passes over a wave the gravitational potential energy of the boat increases by 19,600 joules the mass of the boat is 8,000 kilograms the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram calculate the change in height of the center of mass of the boat as it passes over the wave so we have the gravitational field strength we have the mass and we have the height so we can use the gravitational potential energy equation so the gravitational potential energy is going to be equal to the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength multiplied by the height we need to work out the change in height the gravitational potential energy is 19,600 the mass is 8,000 multiplied by the gravitational field strength which is 9.8 Okay, so 8,000 times 9.8 is going to give you an answer of 78,400 and that's equal to 19,600. We can divide on both sides to get the height. So 19,600 divided by 78,400 giving us an answer of 0 0.25 so the height is 0 0.25 meters and that would be worth three marks and that is it for this video thanks for watching i hope you liked it and one last thing please subscribe hit the like button and the notification bell